In this web development lesson, you can learn to easily create responsive website layouts using CSS3 media queries. Media queries allow us to target a particular media type and then apply zero more expressions that check for the conditions and particular media features. Okay. To start with the bare bones of an HTML5 web document, and we're also going to create three different style sheets. So no matter what device the user comes to our site with, we'll have a layout appropriate for that. So let's go up into our code editor and say file, new, CSS, and we're going to place the following rule for a div that has an ID of my div. Now let's press control S and save this as small and it'll have a .css extension or you can just type in small.css. All right, so you see I have small.css and I also have test.html. So within the body element in test.html, let's place this div that has an ID of my div. Now in the head element of our document, let's create a link element and we want to set it up like we normally would to link to our style sheet. So we'll put in the rel attribute and make that equal to style sheet. Then we'll put our href attribute and make that equal to our small.css. So this is the normal way that you would apply a style sheet to a web page. But in a moment, I'm going to show you how to add the CSS media query logic to this. So if we render this in our favorite browser, you can see that our style sheet is in fact affecting our web page. It's attached to it. It's linked. Now I'm going to take small.css and I'm going to file, save as, medium.css and large.css. Okay, so you see what I have now? I have my test.html file. And then I have three style sheets, small, medium, and large. Now in my small style sheet, you can see my div has a width of 500 pixels. My medium style sheet, let's go ahead and change that to 1,000 pixels. And in the large style sheet, let's change this to 1,400 pixels or 1,200 pixels, whatever number you want. So these represent your various style sheets that you want to switch between according to what the user's screen size or window size is. Now to make this link element be a little bit more dynamic, we can add the media attribute. And you can see all of the different media types that you can choose between. And there's actually some new ones and I think oral was deprecated in CSS2 and they added 3D glasses and uh, embossed I think something like that. But the most common ones you'll see are print and screen and we're going to use screen. So if you leave it like that everything will work like it still does now. What we'll do is add and and then we'll open close parentheses and in between parentheses we're going to put the min width. So if the minimum width of the user screen is zero pixels they're going to be fed small.css. Now let's just highlight that whole line that entire link element. Let's go down and let's change this number to 1000 pixels and this to medium. And now let's copy that one more time. Let's make this number 1400 and this large.css. Press control S to save this test.html and then render it in your favorite browser. All right, so what happens is as I scale the browser, you can see it's switching between style sheets. There's the 500 pixel width. There's the 1000 pixel width. And then the 1400 pixel width. Okay? So as the user's resizing their browser window, or when they first load up the page, when the page first loads. All right, now I'm going to show you a different way to work with media queries in line. So let's just open a style element in the head, make its type text CSS. Make sure we go down a couple of lines and close the style element. Okay, so to do the same thing, but in line in CSS, you can do this. You can see I just have two evaluations here. So basically, if the user's screen or window size is less than a thousand pixels, they're going to get the div is going to be 500 pixels wide. But if their screen or window has a minimum width of a thousand pixels, then the div is going to be 900 pixels wide. And you can change all of the style on the whole page within these evaluations. So now let's run this in our favorite browser. You can see we're not connected to any style sheets, but we'll still get the same effect. You'll see the div in the center goes from 900 pixels wide to 500 pixels wide according to the user's window or screen size. Okay, so that just shows you an alternative inline method and a way to use the at symbol and media attribute. And you can do this in your style sheet or directly inline in the page like I have it here.
but I'm just going to go back to the way it was before. But I think using the link element and changing your style sheets completely would be a more organized and smarter way to go about it. But if you need to just change a couple of things, you can use that inline approach. So I'll have both of the code examples on the page of develop PHP where this video lesson renders in case any of you guys need to get to my exact source code. All right, hope you've enjoyed this tutorial on creating responsive website layouts using CSS3 media queries.